So I am John Blitzky. I'm the co-founder of Balcony Dow. Balcony Dow is, you could think of us as a Web3 investment banking firm. But our goal, if I could have you guys leave here with one idea, our goal is we want to tokenize everything. Everything. The whole world. The whole globe we want to tokenize. Uh, because we think the technology has got us finally to the point where we can. Um, and so what I'd like to do is kind of take you through how we're approaching this and where I think real estate is going as it relates to Web3. So, who are we? We are four co-founders, Dan Silverman, Alex McGee, Mike Rochelle, my partners over there. All four of us are crypto bros. We got our real estate license uh, during the pandemic and we thought, let's just tackle a $326 trillion space. Kidding. We are all real estate pros. We've been in this business for a long time. I was licensed uh, in this city doing deals in 1999, spent the last quarter century putting together real estate deals. And so I understand these pain points. Um, I have run a design and build firm, uh, have done ground up development, value add, investment sales, investment banking, um, all in this space, as have my partners who also come from real estate families. So as people who really understand how the sausage is made, we see where there's actual uh, efficiencies that can be achieved with this blockchain technology. So the first thing, that we did when we decided that we were going to tackle the inefficiencies in the space, is we said, all right, how do we make a digital representation of this built world that makes sense, that allows us to navigate it the way we navigate deals here in New York City and you know, across the world? And the first thing that we realized is the NFT is the digital equivalent of real estate, right? Real estate is the original non-fungible asset. The NFT is a non-fungible token. This is the appropriate technology to digitize real estate and begin to manipulate it and work with it and start to transact with it on the blockchain. So the opportunity is obviously enormous, right? There's a $326 trillion space that we're, we're attacking. It's the globe. It's every single thing that we see around us. Merging this with crypto, which let's call it a $3 trillion market, allows us to create a super asset. And the super asset is an asset that takes the illiquid real estate world and makes it more liquid, makes it more transparent, makes it move with greater speed, and it allows you to transact it across a distance with absolute certainty as to what it is that you're transacting. That's the goal, that's where we're, where we're trying to end up here. And here's our toolbox. So the, the first, I think, misstep in this space is, is trying to make the blockchain do more heavy lifting than it's actually capable of doing. The blockchain is not a database. It's not. Uh, the blockchain is a place where we're verifying these assets. The blockchain is our county registrar's office, right? To take the analog space and sort of transpose it to the digital space, this is where all of our records are kept, right? So there's a title, there's a deed, there's an encumbrance, there's a transaction. All that's going to live on the blockchain. But now it has to speak to this digital wrapper. And that's where we've developed the RE NFT, the real estate NFT. We're not super creative. And the RE NFT is a place where all of those documents are held. So we see this, this NFT, this RE NFT, as the digital wrapper for this asset. It's almost like a folder. It's your LLC or your, your SPV if you're, if you're in finance. It's the physical asset. It is the building in this digital format. And it persists for perpetuity. Right? Just like a building. Buildings don't get up and walk around. They don't die. A building is built. That piece of land exists for perpetuity. It could be altered in any number of ways, but it exists for perpetuity. And so our RENFT exists for perpetuity. And it takes every single document, every single descriptor of an asset, and it brings it into this wrapper where you can access it. It tells you the square footage of the property. It tells you the tenants, the electricity, it tells you the mortgages, it tells you the interest rates, the escalations on the, on the leases, every single descriptor of this asset. And so in the future, this is where lenders will go when they need to figure out the condition of a property. This is where investors will go when they need to figure out how investable an asset is. This is the actual thing that will be transacted when somebody sells a property on the blockchain. They'll be transacting this digital asset. And then the last thing that this needs is a marketplace where you can transact, right? And the marketplace is really important. To the extent that we have all of this data, right? We know the terms of all the leases on, on the asset. We can immediately determine the weighted average lease terms. We can immediately determine the profitability of an asset. 
Now, every single piece of data that comes in needs to be acted upon, right? And that's our marketplace. And so this is a good place to note that every single piece of real estate that yields is a security, period, full stop. I probably should have started by saying this, but these are all securities. These are all regulated securities that are subject to the SEC. They have to be traded on a FINRA-regulated ATS or alternative trading system. Um, and that trading system needs to be built on data. That data comes from the RNFT, and it is stored on the blockchain uh, in a hash, right? So the integration of this is, is where the rubber meets the road. We have our entire investment history. We have all the encumbrances. We have tax payments, assessments. We have the title. We have the deed, right? All this stuff is living inside of there. These records are immutable. They're never going to go anyplace. Now we're able to do the next piece of this. Piece one is we have a digitized asset. We can trade it. It's a one for one. That's probably not a security. But the second piece is now we can fractionalize it. And so now we could take this property that we're in today, let's call it a quarter of a billion dollar asset, and we could each own our proportionate share of it. And this changes the patina of investment. Assets like this are not available for most of you guys, most anybody in the world to invest in. These are heavily gated, heavily guarded assets that are reserved for family offices, private equity, large institutions. These are not assets that you and your mom and your kid brother can just jump online and purchase. Yet, that's about to change. We see this as creating a completely fluid capital stack that has democratized access for anybody to enter and make these acquisitions. And so that changes this hustle culture that, that we're all used to, where you, know, you might buy some rundown single family for you know, an A cap that isn't an A cap, it's broken, and you're actually going to lose money on. Instead of that being the gateway investment for most people who want to get into real estate, it might be the World Trade Center. It might be this building. Class A core assets that are defensible, that yield well. Incidentally, if any of you guys are, are in the DeFi space here, that's probably a layer zero asset for future DeFi. And we won't get there today because I only have another five minutes, but I think we'll see over the next few years that real estate is going to become the layer zero of DeFi transactions. We now have a blockchain that's recording our transactions. We have a digital wrapper that has all of the data for these assets living inside of it. We have a marketplace where it's going to trade. The next piece is governments, right? Governments are going to move to the blockchain. If, if you're my age, I'm 43, I grew up with paper, paper transition to the internet. People said, you know, oh, I still like my typewriter. My first assistant in real estate when, when I was in Midtown at 21 years old, Barbara Eisenstadt, God bless her soul, still used a typewriter. We still had a fax machine. We were never going to get off paper. That same mentality is being kind of applied to, to this space now. We're very certain governments are going to move to the blockchain. This is a better system. It's more efficient. It's more transparent. It costs less money. It's immutable and it's verifiable. We're all going to be moving here. And so what we're building at Balcony Dow is a tool that these governments can use. They can take our technology. They can use this real estate NFT, borrow that schema, and standardize this space. And our goal is to not standardize it for New York County or Kings County or the state of New Jersey. Our goal is to standardize this globally. Where we want to end up is we want somebody in Bangladesh to buy buildings in Brooklyn and know exactly what he's getting and transact it in a standardized way, with a standardized schema, and that lives inside of our RENFT. So the next piece of this is how does this actually work for people who are in the space today? There's this kind of like juvenile, sophomoric impulse to say, oh, we're going to disintermediate everybody. We hate title insurance, we hate brokers, we're not going to use any of those. But I, that's a farce. Realistically, all of these people have a seat at the table in this metaverse reimagination of this asset class. And so we see title insurance persisting. We think it's going to get a lot cheaper. But we see title insurance being part of this. We see uh, insurance brokers, we see mortgage brokers, we see real estate brokers all being able to transact in this way. But this is a distributed way that they're going to transact with greater speed, greater efficiency, higher profitability. All of these people are members of what we call the Balcony Asset Club. And the Balcony Asset Club is effectively a DAO that allows the entire ecosystem to participate on these transactions. 
the first step to coming into our Boston Assets Club is, is our deed. Our deed is available right now. This was the first thing that we ever developed. The really interesting thing about our deed is we first built it as an ERC-721. It was completely blank. There was nothing inside of it. And what we're trying to demonstrate to people is we're, we're trying to sort of culture them into how this technology actually works. So we have an empty deed. You have basically like an empty JPEG image when you purchased it. And then we powered it up and we put this image that you see in front of you here inside of it, which is the, the balcony deed rotating MPEG, right? So we've got a mixed media uh, piece of content that lives inside of the NFT. And so what we're trying to demonstrate to people is this is where your title is going to live. This is where your lease is going to live. This is where your mortgage is going to live. It's going to live inside of this wrapper. It's going to be a rich multimedia container for the legal, the financial, uh, and all the due diligence structures that persist and relate to, to this asset. Here's our first project. So this is going to be coming out uh, later this year, early next. This is 23rd Avenue. We're calling this the first ever building born on the blockchain. A piece of virgin land, and every single attribute of this asset is tokenized. It lives inside of our RENFT technology. So the original acquisition of the dirt, the approvals for the development of this property, the uh, traditional finance loan that exists for this property, all of the LPs, all of that lives inside of the RENFT for this project. And this will be the first ever use case that demonstrates soup to nuts, front to back, how the entire process can live on chain. And one of the interesting things about these investments which is a key distinction between, for example, a REIT. REITs are, are very public, they're very transparent. They have all this data, or lots of this data, on, uh, available through their filings. But not quite, right? Because this is going on in real time. We get a construction approval, it goes on chain immediately. Anything that happens in the real world happens inside of this RNFT instantaneously. And it also provides LPs with a tax advantage way to invest in this because you're not purchasing a corporation. This isn't the Faustian bargain that REITs had to make to be able to offer their securities. These are LP interests. This one is in the opportunity zone, uh, which is a whole other conversation. And our investors, our holders of these RENFT tokens, get all of those tax benefits for their direct ownership of this asset. So in total, what we have is a total new framework, completely new framework, for us to purchase, transact, capitalize, hypothecate all these assets around us. It allows us to put a mortgage on this building in 10 minutes and then repay it five minutes later. It allows us to fractionalize ownership of it so anybody can invest in core assets, quality core assets. And it gives us a way for this to sit on the blockchain for perpetuity in a way that's transparent. We think this is how the entire world gets tokenized. By using the RENFT, by having it speak to the blockchain and transact on these regulated marketplaces, this is how the whole world gets tokenized. So I invite all of you to go to balconydow.com. You can go to balconydow.com forward slash airdrop. There is a deed available. Become a deed holder. Our community is amazing. We have you know, people in there that are educating on real estate investments people who are putting deals together inside of our community. Uh, and we hope any of you guys that have an interest will come join us. Thank you so much.